Hey guys, what's up? It's Finch here. Happy Metagame Monday. Today we're going to be discussing something that I previously brought up on the channel, the OU tiering survey. We now have the results for it. We kept it open for about a week and we received over 3,000 responses, which I think is simply amazing. We have all sorts of people responding, people that were low on the ladder, high on the ladder, people that played some tournaments, people that played a lot of tournaments, people that were more casual, people that were more serious about the game, and hearing from all sorts of people that had all different degrees of experience in the game was just absolutely amazing. It was my pleasure to really interact with as many people as I could and just read all these responses. Now, some of it is down to sheer numbers, as in a lot of it was numerical responses, i.e. ranking Pokemon on a scale of 1 to 5 or the metagame on a scale of 1 to 10. But there was also a written component. I read through over 2,000 to 3,000 responses, and I'm trying to get to the last batch from the last couple of days soon myself. Um, and I'm just really trying to have the sentiments that I read kind of reflected my own personal opinions. Um, obviously, my own personal opinion is still my opinion at the end of the day, but reading what the players have to say and kind of using that to help scope the metagame and how we um, we approach it is important. Not everything should be decided by me or any individual group of people, but rather by the collective. What the players have to say matters to me and everyone else, and I think that really is shown in our recent quick bans of Kieran Black and Zygarde. Those two Pokemon easily received the most support, not only in general, but also in particular, there was a huge uptick in support of those by people who qualified both via hitting the top 150 of the ladder or via playing tournaments. And the thing is that while those trends did show that there was a spike in them, they were also the two most supported Pokemon in general. And we're going to get to that in a bit. I also want to say that the current metagame seems to be being received really well by the player base. Um, we'll get to that probably first and foremost, so it's really cool. I'm just going to go ahead and start this off though with a bit of an introduction. So we finally hit the deadline for the SSU tiering survey. Over 3,000 responses, which is amazing. Personally read through most, so many of them. I appreciate everyone who went out of their way to respond, and I encourage you guys to keep it up. And post in the metagame discussion thread, which I briefed you guys on in my recent video on how to navigate Smog on forums. But if you have any questions about that, let me know, guys. I'd love to help you guys out. Get you to a place to discuss the metagame and share your thoughts, because I love hearing from you guys. Or anywhere else in the OU sub forum, there's a whole slew of resources. For example, I just updated sample teams and there's going to be a second Metagame Monday video later today coming out with the sample teams being discussed. And I might even use one or two of them in OU Lives this week, so stay tuned for that. It's just going to be a ton of fun in OU. I'm enjoying it. I know you guys are too. So if you guys enjoyed that, be sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And if you want to really let me know, be sure to let me know in the comments because I really love interacting with you guys. Anyway. I'm going to discuss the responses to some questions using two different demographics. The first will be everyone who responded, so it could just be Casual Joe who's played five games on the PS Ladder, or um, it could be, you know, Old Man Harry who's played 500,000 games on the PS Ladder, and that's fine either way. Everyone got to respond, but then also people who are more um, more experienced and perhaps even successful in the game, those who qualified via the top 150 ladder, or via playing tournaments, three or more games in SSU in the recent spot got stake draft, 10 or more points in Smog on Tour 30, or being in the top 16 of the recent fall seasonal, um, also got put into a specific group. And what we did was, while well, we weighed out the responses overall too, because those numbers and the graphs that I'm going to show you are important, we also looked at the qualified response as well, just to see if there are any major discrepancies. And honestly, it was all following the same trend here, but it was cool just to see, um, kind of break it down a little bit more. I, I think that it's really important to hear from everyone, but also hear from people that are more experienced in the metagame might make a little more sense than hearing from you know your casual Joe and seeing as we got over 3,000 responses there are definitely uses to both of them as I've outlined so I think it's really cool that we got to hear from so many people. Unfortunately Google Forms which is what we do the graphics don't really support it they break down so we actually manually did it and we confirmed everyone who had an account in the ladder that was that high or qualified via tournaments via those demographics I broke it down and I did it manually alongside EO who is a current co-tier co leader around, alongside TDK both of them are very great um, leaders, they do good work for the council, they all around Smogon, they're very helpful, so big shout out to those guys, they really make all this possible. And yeah, you know, I do a lot of the grunt work on the council, I'll be the first to admit that, but I think as a collective we're really functioning at a high level, and I love being able to carry my weight, and I'm glad that I'm able to do that, so. Yeah, but anyway, without further ado, we're actually going to get into the questions that were asked. Four in particular are going to be examined here. How, um, how much do you enjoy the metagame, i.e. do you enjoy playing it? How competitive do you find the metagame, or how good do you find it, i.e. how competitive it is, you know? Um, how do you feel about Zygarde, which is something we recently clicked command, and how do you feel about Kyurem Black? Oh, oh Kyurem Black was first, yeah, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, yeah, sorry, Kyurem Black second, I forgot the bold. oh boy, I got a bold. so well, you know what I mean. Um, and then we're also going to briefly, emphasize on briefly, because not as much attention, give a look into others as well. I'm going to give my thoughts, and we'll get into this in a bit more detail, so yeah, let's get into it. So first and foremost, 
how much do you enjoy the current metagame? I.e., do you enjoy playing it? Well, first off, let me ask you guys, do you enjoy playing this metagame? Why or why not? Be sure to let me know in the comments down below, because I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say. But anyway, here is a graph. Get out of the way, rough. Um, so I got notifications on, because I'm currently on a week where I don't have to work. Um, so basically, I turn notifications on my computer when I'm not working, just so I can pay attention to some on stuff, but I turn them off otherwise. It's kind of a love-hate relationship with them, so I don't want them on while I'm trying to be productive, but if they're not, not being productive, I'm just playing Pokemon, then why the hell not? So, yeah, I can always stay up to date. But anyway, um... How much do I enjoy the current metagame? Personally, I put seven as my answer, but the average was actually a bit higher. So for those of you that were in a general population, people that might not play tournaments or achieve high marks in the ladder, the average was a 7.284 out of 10. So a little higher than the seven that I put. But for those of the 60 people of these 3,153 that qualified for those, I call them qualified response, but you could just say experienced them. Their average was just a tiny smidgen higher, a 7.43 out of 10. And I just also went to some specific data on those. The lowest response out of everyone was a 4 out of 10, and 55 of 60 total responses were at a 6 out of 10 or higher, which in my opinion is pretty impressive. That means the bulk of them fell between 6 and 8. By the way, they're only a handful of 9s and 10s. But yeah, with that said, I think it's amazing that right now in this metagame, over a thousand people, um, actually, scratch that, over 1,500 people, which is virtually half the responders, responded that the metagame is somewhere between an 8 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10 in terms of their enjoyment. I don't think people could have said that earlier this generation. So I think this shows a couple of things right at the bat. A, are retesting a bunch of old Ubers and trying to let them settle is doing positive things. And right now, the metagame sees things like Faramosa and Blaziken, and Tornadus T, Pokemon that have been uber in prior generations, yes, Tornadus T was uber in generation 5, that are actually pretty healthy presences in the metagame as well. Not to mention prior ubers like Aegislash, that's it's you, you now, and it's still gonna have final place, no, you don't worry. But yeah, also Pokemon that might have um, been ubers at some point prior to this generation, like Cinderace Magirna, they're all you now. So, I think it's pretty cool that our ability to kind of be flexible and let a lot more offensive firepower in the metagame has actually kind of morphed the perspective. And truth be told, the metagame is almost as balanced oriented as before. Like the length of games, if you were to do like a turn by turn analysis would actually be within, you know, five turns on average per game as before. It's nothing really crazy. It's just the different scenery, the new Pokemon. That's what keeps people going. That's keeps it interesting. It kind of, instead of, you know, same old, same old, it's more of a revolving door. There's more different things to try out. So despite it being more balance oriented, which it definitely is right now, there's still a ton of fun stuff to do. And also, maybe you guys just think you see less stall. Personally, I don't think stall has ever been really good this generation. It's just all been a lot of balance, but now there's definitely no way stall is coming out about anytime soon. So that's also really cool as well. Definitely enjoy seeing that. And even if Clefable is, you know, the second or third most common Pokemon, for every Clefable, there are, you know, five really strong offensive Pokemon. I mean, as you look at the usage statistics, for example, seven of the top 10 Pokemon are mighty, are mighty offensive Pokemon, you know, it's like 13 or 14 out of the top 20, etc. So I think that's really, really cool about the metagame that it maybe is a little more faster paced. It's still pretty close, but also just the Pokemon we're seeing, they're generating, they're rendering more enjoyable experiences for everyone. And that's what matters. And unfortunately, this is a bit more of, um, uh, don't mind that. I just keep getting asked questions. I'm going to close my Pokemon Showdown tab, actually. Yeah, but anyway, this is a bit less tangible of a result, i.e. enjoyability doesn't necessarily dictate, you know, if we're going to suspect something or not, because a lot of people can enjoy the metagame but still find it uncompetitive, or enjoy the metagame but still think we could get it even better. They turn those 8s into 9s or 9s into 10s and so on and so forth. So let's get into that. How competitive do you find the current metagame? And for reference, I believe my response to this was a 5 out of 10. But um, it seems I was actually in the minority as a lot of people ranked it even higher, which I think is super cool. So this one, there are a few less responses to, 3,132 responses to, but despite that, we saw over a thousand people again, I believe, yeah, over a thousand people again, yeah, you just did the math in my head, respond with eight or higher to how good you find the current metagame C, do you find it more competitive or competitive? And that means that over one third of the people did find the metagame quite competitive, 8 to 10, and then if you add in another 808, which puts it to almost two-thirds of the total respondents, just just a hair shy of it, they find the metagame very competitive. You know, 7, 8, 9, 10 out of 10, that's all pretty high. Now, the overall score was still, it was a 6.792 out of 10, so that means that, you know, it's between a 6 and a 7, but it's closer to a 7, and it's a little less than how enjoyable do you find the metagame. So, to me, that means the discrepancy means, while it's not, like, super large, the slight discrepancy means that 
while it's enjoyable, with one or two bands, it could be even more enjoyable and more competitive. So maybe we should be looking into potentially suspect testing something or quick banning something more. And that means that I'm going to be looking at the graphs down below of the Pokemon we didn't actually quick ban and just figuring out maybe we should be doing X next in a week or two once things settle out. But we're going to get to that later in this video. So yeah, I think this is a really important response though. A lot of people find the metagame competitive, they're enjoying it, they're feeling that the better player is winning more games than not. And of the 60 qualified respondents, this is actually a pretty big drop up. It fell down to 6.3 out of 10. So they were higher on enjoyability, but they were lower on the uh, competitiveness. So that means that a lot of them also might be believing that there's something suspected. So I actually read through all 60, 61 of them in their individual like written responses too, which is pretty interesting as well. So that gives me some personal perspective. Now, I'm not gonna include all 3,000 or even all 60 written responses in this post because that would make it a literal novel, not an actual post. And I have a life, but I will say that I'll try and allude to some of them when going through individual Pokemon because that's important as well. And I've also, um, as someone counsel, I could kind of advocate for, oh, let's look into X Pokemon or Y Pokemon and here's why. So I'm really interested to see what people have to say on that as well. But anyway, um, just to go into that, there was one person that gave it a one out of 10, um, but 51 of the total 60 responses of the qualified actually were five out of 10 or higher. Pretty good, and I was a five, as I said, so yeah. Um, if you look at it, I mean, it looks like well under a thousand people were between one and five, so it's pretty cool. That's well under a third, and then I mean, yeah, okay, 533 to the six, which is above where even I put it, so that's good. Now, personally, I'm gonna say this now. Um, at the time I filled out the survey, I thought my metal was problematic, but ever since Trend Black got banned, my metal has actually kind of faded away. It's much more, um, manageable now in my eyes, or maybe just it sees less usage. It's still a very good Pokemon, but I find it that it's easy to contain, so that's cool. Um, something that I do find problematic though, um, Corvidance Famosa is really hard to deal with, and Spectre as well. Those are probably my top two, followed by um, a distant, distant, distant third, fourth, fifth kind of um, would be Melmetal slash Toxpec slash Magearna. I don't think any of those Pokemon need to be addressed right now, but I could totally see something like Magearna completely scaling out of control, snowballing with the Sweeper sets or Choice Pack set, and it's just waiting to kind of hit its stride. Right now we're seeing a ton of Heatran, a uh, ton of special defensive Tox Specs, a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of Excadrill. So no, nothing necessarily hard counters but a lot of things keep it in check, and no matter what set it is, you feel like a lot of teams are kind of have it like double checked. So I'm wondering that one, if the paranoia ever wears off, then I, I think it could become a problem, so I'm really curious to see when we get there, because I think it's something that we're going to have to look into, but not yet. And I think the fact that we're in that not yet phase with things like Magearna, things like maybe maybe Faramosa, makes it that there's a lot of cool offensive Pokemon right now, and that might be grabbing a lot of people's attention. So we got to be careful about not getting them out of the way too quickly, but also if they do become a problem, making sure that we do address them when it's appropriate. So it's kind of towing a fine line, if you will. Shout out Harry Styles. Um, yeah, but anyway, let's go down. Oh yeah, I, I made a little note here. So this is me speaking on behalf of myself, not the entire council, but the discrepancy between the answer of the first question and the second question, even if slight, told me that there may be room for tiering action that could help balance the tier. Seeing as we recently banned Karen Black and Zygarde, which are hyperlinked there, this may bridge the gap and make the metagame more competitive. However, we should still continue to keep our eyes open to potential future subjects of tiering action, i.e. a suspect or a quick ban. So we're definitely going to continue to monitor the metagame. We're discussing in the council chat just about every day we can. And I'm really curious to see how things go in the future. You know how it is? So, yeah. Um, next question is, on a scale of 1 to 5, how do you feel about Zygarde? Note the scale indicated that 1 meant it was not broken, whereas 5 meant it was broken. Um, so yeah, now we're going to introduce a Pokemon. And as you see, this graph is a large reason why we looked into potential quick banning it. Oh, oh my god, like almost 2.5. It was like 2.35 thousand, I think, something like that. Where... Um, between four and five, which means that it should be banned. And then of the remainder, more than half of the remaining, you know, seven, 800 responses were in the three column at almost 500. So all in all, we saw 15% at three, 34.3% at four, and 40.9% at five. I personally give it a four myself. But all in all, with the average response being a 4.054, and of the qualified responders being even higher at a 4.148, it was clear that quick banning Zygarde was a play. Um, it was really undisputable that it was broken. I mean, to me, I was ready to ban it. I gave it a four. I think four and five kind of like clear ban. Like three is like, okay, maybe suspect it, maybe ban it. And two and one is like, okay, maybe give it a little more time. And or if you're at one, just don't touch it. And 
only 104 out of 3,166 were okay with it, and I think that's telling. So, ultimately, given this data and our conclusion of Zygarde, we elected Quick Ban Zygarde earlier this week. It's also worth noting that Zygarde received a significant amount of support for a Quick Ban during the initial council vote, which I alluded to in a prior video, but basically, when we ban Genesect and Naga Adele, we also discussed Pokemon like Zygarde and Karen Black and others that we reintroduced to the metagame. Now, thankfully, Zygarde we didn't ban then, but we gave it more time and we determined that it got even better in the metagame and that the player base has supported us. So now we were a bit more unanimous or closer to unanimous at least and we were able to act on it there, thus leading to a Zygarde quick ban, which I think is good. I think it was a step in the right direction. We used our resources, we used a player base in order to make a tiering decision and I think it worked out for both parties to counsel who did the right thing for the metagame, and the players can now have a more enjoyable and competitive metagame. So I think this is a process being used in the best possible fashion. I'm curious to see what you guys have to think about that as well. The same can be said about Kira. I'm sorry that I didn't bold the question here, but on a scale of one to five, how do you feel about Kira Black? Note the scale indicated again, one means it's not broken, whereas five means it was broken. So here um, we see an interesting development, whereas the general player base was 0.3 lower on Trump Black, putting it at 3.833 out of 5. The um, flip, if you look at the more qualified or experienced response, if you will, it actually went 0 0.3 higher than it kind of was expected to be at 4.344, higher than it was for Zygarde. So you see a little flip flop there. That's interesting. I, I think the fact that the matter is that Zygarde with Blair was just really annoying and people couldn't get over that in general. But more experienced players realized that Dragon Dance Kyrim, it basically forced things like Melmetal to be used on so many teams and that alone is super restrictive and ridiculous and yeah some people might have just spammed my metal or spammed like a bulky Magirna and that's fine more casual players you know I'm just like oh I only use one team and it deals with Kyrim that's fine and a lot of people might have ranked it effectively based off that but when you look a little you dig a little deeper the council was super unanimous on this one um anyone 100% wanted to quick ban Kyrim Black these results were enough the qualified responses proved it and even the regular responses being in a 3.83 that alone is pretty um, pretty overwhelming, I'd say. It's worth noting that of these, over a thousand people put it out of five, and over a thousand people put it out of four, which is pretty balanced. We did see um, 272, or 8.6 percent of people, and 142, or 4.5 percent of people said they didn't really find it broken. Um, and some prominent players like Joey felt that way, and that's completely fair. Maybe you just dealt with it better than us, or maybe maybe you just didn't get enough experience with it, or maybe you could retest it again in the future. We're actually willing to retest Trump and Zygarde. Um, if there's another DLC, just like we retested things this time, which I think would make a lot of sense, or just in the future in general, you know, give it a year or two down the line, who knows where the metagame is at. But right now, if we're going to retest anything, I assume it'd be Zamzenta or Zamzenta C, things that we're going to discuss a little bit later on. They actually got a decent amount of support, but first we got to focus on what's in the metagame before we focus on what's out of the metagame, if that makes sense. So, yeah, but anyway, ultimately, given the data and our decision, and our discussion on Kieran Black, rather, we elected the Quick Bank Kieran Black earlier this week. It was also worth noting that Kieran Black received some support during an initial council vote that I alluded to also for Zygarde. was the subject of pages worth of discussion and metagame discussions read and received unanimous support from the council to Quick Ban when we proceeded earlier this week. So, yeah, basically, a lot of, a lot, a lot of support. Kieran Black, in my opinion, I put it as a five, was more broken of the two, but I think both Zygarde and Kieran Black broken regardless of which to prioritize or not i'm glad we got both of them out of the way it's clear that they were both roadblocks to a fully developed and competitive metagame we also had questions on some pokemon that did not get quick banned quite yet but we believe that they were pokemon that deserve discussion of metagame nonetheless the, gra the graphs of them are below so let's go through these graphs first off my metal now i feel like a lot of more people would shift towards the two column now as opposed to the uh as opposed to the three column, but as it stands, still the average was just slightly below three, I believe. 996 people, or 31.5, put it at three. Personally, I put it at a three as well. I was in that group, but now that Karen Black's gone, there's a lot less reason to use it. There's a lot more competitive competition from other steel types, and also that means that a lot more natural checks and counters to it are just floating around, especially with the abundance of physically defensive Rocky Helmet and Tox specs, um, checking, you know, double iron bash, a lot of faster Pokemon that can kill it, such as Special Paramosa and Heatran and a lot more pressure. Spikes are getting more and more common as well. Just a lot of things that can kind of slowly but surely check it. But I think the big thing is Slowbro is super common right now. And not only is it really good against a standard um, metal, but it could also even switch into a Choice Band Thunder Punch, lift it, tumble the tail, and scout it out a little bit. Choice Band metal actually has dropped a ton of users. The Leftovers Protect set is more common right now, especially in the higher ladder, but both sets are still pretty great. The metal is still gonna be one of the better Pokemon in the metagame, but I don't necessarily know if I viewed as, you know, one of the top three or five Pokemon anymore. 
let alone something that I'd banned. So yeah, I'm glad I kind of put it in the middle. I'm leaning more towards two than three now, but I'm curious to see where it'll go in the future. Faramosa um, received a bit more support, as you can see. Yeah, so I mean, I'm trying to like kind of put it in a compare and contrast. So as you see, we saw over a thousand people and then 700 people here, and a lot less on this end. So yeah, a lot of people thought Faramosa was a bit too problematic in the metagame. And if we went to the qualified responses, which I didn't put the specific data on for these, um, it actually was a bit less supportive of banning Faramosa. Which I find interesting, but the average was a bit over three here, as you can see. And I think that it might be the next Pokemon, it or Spectre, that we really look into. Corporate Dance Fire also complementing the physical set is really strong. The Shockwave set, which I think everyone needs to give credit to Envy for, I believe. And Envy's great, and I'm sure he can put it in his own right, but... And I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this. I've seen Shockwave being used on Fire Mosa since before Envy's video. And that's not me saying I take credit for it, because I... Do not take credit for it, but I've faced it on a ladder before, Envy. Um, so I'm sure some ladder here out there is just like looking through Fairmouth. It's like, oh, Shockwave, that's cool. It packs its finny in. So be it Envy, who I'm sure came with on his own, is an amazing YouTuber, super good content creator, and you guys should all check out, by the way, people that are creative like Envy or ladder heroes that are creative in their own right, building their own teams, um, kind of figuring it out. But yeah, Fairmouth, it took a little bit to adapt to being in this kind of really good tier. I think it's one of the best, you know, three to five offensive Pokemon in the tier without a doubt. And I think it should be looking at the suspect attention if all else holds and we give it, you know, a couple weeks or a month and develop. I don't know if it's the most pressing issue though. Again, things like Spectre are out there. Then there's also Magirna, Toxapex, you know, even Metal. So a lot of Pokemon to discuss. And I don't think that there's any clear consensus number one right now, but I am curious to hear what you guys have to say on that matter yourselves. Blaziken, Blaziken, Blaziken. Oh, everyone told me. Yo, Finch, are you sure you want to retest Blaziken? Blaziken was really broken. Speed boost, dude. Speed boost, it snowballs out of here. Yo, Finch, are you sure you want to retest Blaziken? What the? Why are you retesting? What the hell? You got a combo. Oh my god, Finch, what are you saying? <sighs> I knew. I knew. Everyone called me fucking crazy. I knew. I knew. Blaziken. <sighs> 1,482 people. One. 829 people. Two. Like, see that? Boom. Ah, I'm feeling it. Uh, much deserved. Blaziken's not broken. Blaziken is a decent, solid Pokemon, and there are some cool sets with it, but it is not broken right now. Maybe it'll pop off and be broken eventually, but right now it's not broken, and I'm so glad we retested it. Ah, nice, 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 nice. Tornado's T, kind of surprising, but it too isn't viewed as broken. In fact, it got around the same amount of support as Blaziken. Um, a little more people at two and three. A little less at four and five, kind of weird flip flop there, but yeah, a very similar amount of people in the one column. All in all, Tornado's T just hasn't panned out. The inaccuracy of Nasty Plot sets is weird. I actually really like Nasty Plot with Hurricane and Weather Ball and Rain teams. I think that's super badass. I would try that out, guys. I actually posted a sample team with it, which check out the sample team video later today if you guys are interested to know you. But yeah, no, um, definitely not broken right now, so that's cool. But then Spectre, you're like, oh my goodness, we have almost a thousand people at three, and then over 700 at two, and again, still decent check at five but it's a super super even distribution which i find to be really interesting especially when you compare it to like where's the talk yeah, look at the talk it's sort of similar to the toxic distribution honestly but yeah no um spectre is a pokemon that all in all i think it's kind of limiting kind of restrictive but in the games it doesn't really do much work it's kind of bad so hit or miss proposition but it does limit you it does restrict you a little bit and i think we have to keep an eye on that so i'm curious to see how that does I really am curious to see how that does. Um, yeah, I think I might make a video on Spectre. In fact, if you guys want to hear me make a video on Spectre and or Famosa, let me know and I'm gonna make a video dedicated to that. But I just think it's interesting that 30% of people are squarely to three and then another, you know, 22.7%, meaning between three and four with over half the people right there. And that means that a lot of people are like, oh, maybe it's suspect worthy, maybe it's ban worthy, but we're not sure yet. We don't want to quick ban it. So we're not gonna like slam the door on it right now, but something to keep an eye on and the Medium does feel like it's adapting to it a little bit we're seeing a lot more sand things with tyranitar we're seeing more like special defensive heatran which can check the nasty plot plus hex set but not necessarily shadow ball or spec sets as well and we're definitely seeing a lot more checks to choice scarf variants but still it can snowball out of control either way and you gotta watch the hell out for spectre guys not gonna lie you do um yeah no and then there's Bagirna. um Bagirna is really solid right now i think that this is a bit of an overreaction. In fact, if you look at the qualified results, a lot more people were in the ones and twos, but um, 
I feel like Mahirna doesn't really truly gain his footing, and I feel like a lot of people are still overreacting to where it was in that earlier metagame, but I still think it can and probably will be broken in the long haul. I just don't personally view it as broken now. I put it as a two myself, um, and I think I stand by that. But once we see an uptick in usage of spec set and hyper offense picks up again, because hyper offense took a huge hit when Zyra Gratiker and Black got banned, which this is more reflective of that metagame. And that metagame was much better for Mahirna. Now that Hyper Offense is kind of all over the place and used a bit less without Zygarde and Trim Black uses pretty pretty much staples in the archetype, Magirna sees usage on one less archetype of team, which is a bit limiting to it. But I think once Offensive Magirna is explored with a little more in this new metagame, give it, you know, a week or two, it could easily, you know, end up a three or four in my opinion. And I'm really curious to see how it develops. I definitely think it's a potential suspect in the future, so we'll have to look into that as well. Cinderace is kind of like Blaziken, but a bit better. Um, we saw, you know, 1,600 people, which is over half, put it at two or three. So at least it's something better than like it's just a heartbeat, you know, putting it at one, like, oh, no chance. But also less than 17%, only 16.2% put it at four or five. So I think it goes without saying that it's not a problem yet, but it could become one in the future, especially with the uptick of usage of future sites Slowbro, which complements it really nicely. And it's not actually a check to it or a counter to it. U-turn does a million to it. So it's like a false sense of security there. So yeah, I think that's really dope as well. Toxapex, really even distribution, but it definitely side starts at one, two, three side. Um, in fact, if you look at the more experienced players, a lot more people ranked it at one and two than this even, but I still think it's something to discuss. Um, well, you know, it's more of a two here. I put it at a two myself, I think, maybe a three, uh, probably a two. People are reacting more and more to Toxic Spikes. A lot of things like Nidos are used, um, Defoggers that beat it like Zapdos, Heavy Duty Boot Spam, super common right now for a number of reasons. So it's minimizing Toxic Spikes. That coupled with things like Offensive Grounds, and things like, you know, Tapu Lele and Magma Storm Heatran seeing more and more usage that really takes advantage of it. I think that's a good sign for potentially, you know, minimizing what tax can do. It's always going to be prevalent, though. And I wouldn't be shocked if we see a metagame one day where it reaches DLC 1 levels, but I don't think it's anywhere near there right now. I think it's a top 10, 12 Pokemon, but that's about all you can say for it, if you know what I mean. Anyway, finally, we're at the topic of Zamazenta and Zamazenta C. For Zamazenta C, the Pokemon that I think is better to, you know, look into here, I actually gave it a 3 myself and for Zamazenta I gave it a one I think Zamazenta is gonna be really strong I'm not really as sold on it being OU I think Blunder brought up some good points about it but yeah no I am um, one I can see it being a two but yeah no and as for Zamazenta C I put it at a, um, a three I don't think it'd be very broken in OU but I also kind of be hesitant because it's still really bulky so like for poking that bulky it still has a pretty good offensive output would it be broken I, I still don't think so but I'm on the fence, I give it a three, and I think that could become a four in the near future. I think the big thing here is, I don't want to do any retest until we bounce meta again. So that might take another suspect, or a quick ban, or two, or even three, given the Pokemon that are annoying in the metagame. But once we get that settled metagame, be it in a month, or in three months, or in six months, I would be down to test some into then. I think we kind of have to get our, um, our order of operations straight though. We got to retest it in a metagame that isn't filled with broken crap. Otherwise, you know, it'll give us a really unfair perspective on it. Because the point of retest is to give a balanced metagame a uh, chance at having a new Pokemon added to it to potentially enhance the metagame itself. But we can't do that if the metagame isn't balanced. We can't do that if there are things that are already broken because that's confounding variables. So Zomzenta might appear less broken than it actually is or more broken than it actually is depending on, you know, what the tier is centralized around and what might otherwise be broken or is broken otherwise. And I think that's important to note. So yeah, I'm pro Zomzenta C retest right now but only for a future metagame that's more balanced, not for the right now metagame, if that makes sense. If you have any questions in that stance, let me know. Um, yeah, so I just want to say that one indicated it should not be considered unbanning at five. Yeah, I should have qualified that. Um, I should have explained that first, but five meant that the council should consider unbanning. So yeah, sorry for that. I hope that makes more sense. But yeah, um, just, just going to go through the ending really quick. So please note that just because Pokemon were not grouped with Zygarde, Karen Black does not mean they're not there off the hook. The metagame will continue to evolve. These surveys will be more in the future than more of them and we'll continue to keep a close eye on the metagame as it develops have any questions on these graphs or the response in general feel free to shoot me a pm anytime we also received lots of valuable written input when responded to the final open-ended question i personally have read through almost all of these thankfully most were brief um thanks everyone for the input again as always the council will be present to address any issues that we believe is if cheering action in metagame when appropriate however I regret to inform 27 people. Um, I got a hyperlink. I'm not going to put that in, but one is to free Darkrai. Um, Darkrai isn't released for the OU Council. We don't deal with lower tiers or national decks or anything like that, so impossible. And it's seven, and eight more wanted Deoxys forums. Again, can't do that. And then we had people that were asking 
why um, Angel Slash is UU could we make it OU. I can't control what's used, same with Volcarona. So I just want to clarify that a little bit. Kind of funny, but you know, we can't control other tiers. They can't control doubles. We can't control, you know, national decks or UU. So they do their own stuff and that's totally fine, but I hope that's cleared up. And yeah, everyone have a great day. And I really um, want to say that. I know times are tough right now for some people. I know the world is going through a lot. Pandemic, you know, it's getting cold out if you live in the US for sure. All sorts of stuff. We all go through our stuff. But I just want to let you guys know, um, thank you so much for choosing to watch my channel. I hope you guys all have a great day. If you guys want to stay in touch with me, check out my Twitter and Discord. The links will be in the description below. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to comment. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button. In fact, I'll do more videos like this, analyzing metagame trends and really discussing the metagame if we hit 2,000 views on this video or we hit 200 likes on this video. So let's get there. And also, last but certainly not least, subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more. Only 55 to 60% of you guys actually are subscribed to watch these videos. And I know a lot of you guys just see in the subscription box, I mean, in the suggestion box, and just click them regularly. But if you can hit that subscription button, it'd really mean the world to me. I'm trying to hit 6,000 ASAP. So let's get there. I know I deserve it. I'm feeling good. You know how it is. <laughs> but nah, um, all right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great day and peace out. Bye bye.